We're going to uh, begin a series um, that I've entitled, I guess there's different ways we could have entitled it, but Understanding and Applying the Bible. Um, understanding and Applying the Bible um, ought to be uh, an important subject to every born-again Christian. Um, you know, each believer must be a Bible student, and every believer can be a Bible student. Uh, that's important to know that. Uh, understanding the Bible is not given to a select few with special knowledge. Okay, that's important. Uh, throughout history, that's the way it's been. You know, uh, people were uh, told this is what the Bible says, and there was nothing that you could do about it. Most of them didn't even have the Bible. Uh, now, notice in uh, 2 Peter 1, I want to read verse 18 through 21. Verse 18 through 21. And the Bible says this. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Okay, now he's referring to uh, the Mount of Transfiguration where they heard the voice of God. Uh, and uh, that was pretty real. Okay, it was the voice of God. But notice he continues. That's a pretty significant event. But notice he continues by saying this in verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day uh, dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, we understand very clearly here that he is talking about the fact that we have the written word of God. Uh, we have a record that is more sure than if we heard the voice of God from heaven. Uh, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Um, I'd like to put it this way. You know, there have been too many believers throughout the centuries who have given their lives for the common man to be able to hold the word of God in his hands. Uh, if you study a little bit of the history uh, during the Dark Ages, uh, it was uh, the, uh, many of the religious circles were trying to prevent people from having the Word of God. Uh, people were, uh, Bibles were gathered, they would go to villages, the, namely the Catholic institution, they would go to villages, they would grab all the Bibles from everybody's homes. Uh, and many of the groups during the Dark Ages, and that's about from the first century to the uh, 15th century, we find that people... Uh, found ways uh, to be able to have the Word of God. Uh, ladies would put a bun, uh, and the Bible would be so small, they would hide it in their buns. Uh, and there are so many ways that people did to preserve the Word of God uh, for us, all of us, to be able to hold that in our hands. Uh, think about it. A Christian population today no longer has to rely upon an elite few who claim to have special knowledge and understanding the Bible. Uh, and really, that's the way it was. And by the way, I, I, to some extent, it is still the way it is today with many sects. Um, for example, Charles Taze Russell uh, with the Jehovah's Witnesses. He claimed to be an authority, to have a special knowledge. Uh, he said the churches are corrupt, and uh, I'm coming, and I'm teaching here what the Bible says. And, uh, well, and then he readjusted meanings, right? There's no hell. Uh, Jesus is not God, okay, and those things. And so, again, we don't have to follow someone and, that says, this is what the Bible says, believe me, you don't, you don't understand, okay. Uh, we can all understand the Word of God uh, for ourselves, okay. So, with this opportunity comes a responsibility. We have a responsibility if we have the Word of God, have the ability to read the Word of God, to understand the Word of God, to apply the Word of God, uh, it is a tremendous opportunity. You see, the purpose of the, these lessons we're going to go through is basically to equip each believer with the tools to properly understand and apply the Bible in his or her life. And, um, and really that's, uh, you know, the goal, uh, it also helps us if you think about it. Uh, there are many false teachers today. You know, Paul wrote that to uh, Timothy. Uh, he said, there's going to become scoffers. Uh, people are going to teach things, and they're going to draw you away from the truth. And he says, don't be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Uh, and so we have to be able to, to uh, not rely upon some authority over us that says, that's what it is. You just need to believe me. Okay? We don't have to do that. We can study the Word of God on our own. Uh, and so uh, basically this is going to be giving us some tools to be able to, be able to understand and also to apply the Bible. 
Now, uh, uh, first of all, and this kind of a, is an introduction uh, lesson here to this series, Understanding and Applying the Bible. Uh, first of all, I want us to consider the priority of um, biblical understanding and application. The priority of biblical understanding and application. If you go with me to Nehemiah chapter number 8, uh, there's a verse here uh, that uh, helps us with the subject. In Nehemiah chapter 8, uh, notice verse number 8. The Bible says, So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. Okay, so we have, uh, if you would, the steps there. They read distinctly, they gave the sense, and they caused them to understand. Okay, so there's the reading, the interpreting, and the applying of the Word of God. Okay, and those are the three steps for studying the Bible. Okay, so these are the three steps. There is the, if you want to call it the observation, okay, or the reading, what does the Bible say? And so you have the ability to read. Uh, it's a thrill to me to see my son start to learn reading. Uh, uh, that's a blessing to me, because uh, I thought he's going to be able to read the Bible one day. Uh, he's starting to learn words, and uh, it's slow, but it's, it's starting there. And so the first one is the three steps. The first one is the observation. What does the Bible say? We have the ability to read the Bible. The second step is this. It is the interpretation, okay? Not just what does the Bible say, but what does the Bible mean? Now, that's important. Um, there are, are uh, many today, and uh, I've tried with the Lord's help not to do that. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, I have uh, failed in my uh, study uh, at times, but often people, will, they'll take one verse and they'll develop a whole message and it's not what that means at all. Uh, for example, there's the, uh, the verse in Proverbs, remove not the old landmark, okay? And so uh, people, they'll take that expression and they'll put a message and they'll say, all right, well, there's the a landmark of the Word of God, and there's the landmark of the local New Testament church, and there's the landmark of, and they'll build a whole message on the idea of, uh, you know, we have to stand strong, build a post, a landmark. Well, that's not what that means, okay? If you look at the historical, uh, the context, what he's referring to is back then, people to know, uh, to differentiate between their properties, they would put stakes in the ground. And often people would go and they would, to expand their property, they would move those stakes, and so that is referring to the theft of property. So that, that's what it's referring to. Now, people will take a verse like that and they'll make it seem whatever they want. I'm sure it's good preaching. I'm not saying it's against the, the Word of God, but it's uh, very important for us to know what the Bible means. And so we'll, we'll talk about that because there's the, uh, the historical context and all those things that uh, will help us understand the Word of God and also better apply the Word of God. So there's the observation, what does the Bible say? There's the interpretation, what does the Bible mean? But also thirdly is there's the application. How can I live the Bible? Uh, and really that's where we're trying to get to. <laughs> uh, how can I live the Bible? How can I apply the Word of God to my life? Now consider first of all the observation. Now, uh, all three of these steps are necessary to the Christian life. The observing the Word of God, reading the Word of God, interpreting the Word of God, and applying the Word of God. Now, we understand that if the Bible is not read, it cannot be interpreted or applied. Uh, however, the believer must not be content just to read the Bible. Uh, there has to be a little further, if you would, uh, of investigation, of study. And so, uh, again, we're going to give tools to help uh, each uh, person understand the, the, the Word of God. You see, a simple observation of God's divine revelation is not enough. Uh, it's not enough just to read it and be content and just say, well, I read it, so I'm good to go. No, we have to uh, observe, interpret, and apply. And so we consider, first of all, the observation, but number two, we consider the application. Now, I missed the interpretation, but I wanna, uh, we'll come back to it later. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable, he says, for doctrine, right? Reproof, correction, instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see, ultimately, the goal of biblical understanding is to bring about a change in the life of a believer. Uh, it is sad to consider that we are observing today a Christianity that is satisfied to say, well, this is what this verse means to me. 
I hear that all the time. Uh, that's not the way it ought to be. <laughs> you see, the uh, Bible studies today are wonderful, and I would encourage everyone to be part of a Bible study, to study the Word of God. But if believers all have their own way of applying the Bible to themselves, then scriptural authority has been forfeited. And so uh, it is important for us, yes, to observe the Bible. We're trying to get to a place where we can apply the Bible, uh, but we have to understand that there can be no proper application without a pop proper interpretation. Uh, and, and look, today, <laughs> um, people have used the Word of God. They've twisted. I mean, uh, today, even in the, to the church setting, people are trying to justify um, um, homosexuals as pastors over churches. And they're using the Bible to do that. Uh, they'll refer back to the Ezekiel. They'll uh, deal with a, uh, the, the sin of Sodom. He says, well, that was not, the, the sin of Sodom was not homosexuality. It was, uh, uh, they uh, were not neighborly. And they'll use the word of God. They'll take a verse here and they'll take a verse there. And uh, the problem today is many people that are in, under, if you would, Christendom, are listening to those voices uh, that are being taken out of context. And so it is important and people are applying the Bible to themselves. I say, well, that's what it means. And you can't tell me that that's not because that's what it means to me. That's a dangerous place to be. Okay? And so we consider the observation, we consider the application, but consider thirdly the interpretation. We come to understand the Bible uh, interpretation, that Bible interpretation is key to the Christian life. Proper interpretation is widely overlooked in believers, teachers, and even at times, preachers. Um, you know, I, I think that to a certain extent, uh, even among um, uh, independent Baptists, that uh, there's a lot of, uh, and I think that people are aware of that, that there's a lot of shallowness in the preaching, which where every message sounds the same. You need to be saved, sanctified, separated, and it all, it's always like the same thing. <laughs> Uh, and that's kind of, a lot of times, preachers preach that way. They'll take a verse and they'll build a whole sermon on one verse taken out of context. And uh, it might not be necessarily something uh, that's bad, but it's very shallow. And I believe that the people of God suffer as a consequence of that, uh, where we don't really understand uh, the Word of God. You see, all three of these steps uh, are equally important, but the most valuable one is interpretation. Okay? The Bible must be read, it must be understood through interpretation, and it must be applied. Uh, Psalm 119 verse 27 says this, Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Now, uh, I want us to go to Acts chapter number 8. In Acts chapter number 8, I want to see here, um, there's a really an important passage here that relates to the subject at hand. Uh, notice in Acts chapter 8, if we go to verse uh, number, let's pick it up in verse 26. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch, of great authority under uh, Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all of her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. And uh, that, so that's good. You see that? That's the observer. Somebody's reading the Bible. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. That's a wonderful thing. And said... Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so he opened not his mouth. That's Isaiah 53. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? That's important, isn't it? That passage is about Jesus Christ. He says, who is this referring to? The name Jesus is not mentioned in there. Uh, the Bible says of himself or of some other man. That's a good question. 
And Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, so he began in Isaiah 53, and preached unto him Jesus. You see what he did? He took the scripture, the word of God, and he preached Jesus using the scriptures. Explained to him, proved to him that Isaiah 53 is referring to Jesus Christ by the scriptures. You see, interpretation is necessary because if there is no proper interpretation, then we can never find out that Isaiah 53 is speaking of Jesus. And so he says in verse 36, And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, <coughs> If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Now, just a side note, many of the modern translations today are missing verse 37, which is an important verse because it answers the question, What hinders a person to be baptized? If he believes, he can be baptized. So that's an important verse. And so he says, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Uh, so do you see the progression? He was reading. Philip came along, gave him the sense, the interpretation of Isaiah 53, expounded it in the scriptures, and proved to him that that was Jesus. And then application. He recognized that that was speaking of Jesus. And so that's the progression of Scripture. It has to be observed, it has to be read, it has to be properly interpreted, and then it has to be applied. But we have to understand that there can be no correct application without the right interpretation. Now, <clears throat> that's a good example, I think, that we have. Now, it is important to understand that simply reading the Bible does not mean that one can understand the Bible. Uh, but with some, uh, some help, everyone can understand the Bible with simple tools. It is essential to understand the Word of God in order to properly teach the Word of God. It is essential to understand the Word of God in order to properly apply the Word of God to our lives. You see, interpretation is the link between observation and application. This is the most important step of all three. There are many ways in which we can apply the Bible, but there's only one interpretation. That's important. There are many ways in which we can apply the Bible. But there's only one interpretation. In other words, the Bible only says one thing. <laughs> uh, and uh, if we're not careful, sometimes we, uh, we can get to a place where we think, well, you know, we got to look for, you know, some uh, deeper meaning that's uh, not in the surface. And it means this, right, literally, but there's got to be some... No, there's one interpretation to the Scriptures. Uh, so we can easily miss what God is saying by not properly interpreting God's Word. And so uh, we see the priority of biblical understanding and application, but secondly, I want us to consider the preeminence of biblical understanding and application. Why can we do that? Why can we observe, interpret, apply the Bible? Um, wh what does the Bible mean to us? Or what should it mean to us? Uh, well, I want us to consider two things. First of all, I want us to consider its authority. The Bible is authoritative it, because it is the Word of God. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he put it this way, he says, the Bible is the writing of the living God. Each letter was penned with an almighty finger. Each word in it, uh, in it dropped from the everlasting lips. Each sentence was dictated by the Holy Ghost. You know, Isaiah 1-2 says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. God has spoken. Uh, and so when we hold the Word of God, understand why, uh, why do we need to read it, interpret it, apply it? Because it's the words of God. It's authoritative. It comes from God. Uh, let's look at a few references. Maybe you, have, uh, you, you do some reading. Let someone go to Galatians 1, 11 and 12. A volunteer. All right, Brother Wagner. Uh, another one, Acts 1, 16. Ray. Matthew 5, 18. All right, Brother Smith. And uh, Proverbs 4.4. 4. All right, Brother Happer, right. Okay. All right, so uh, Brother Wagner, Galatians 1, 11 and 12. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which is preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, nor was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Did you get that? Uh, the things that he received, he received it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It, did, it was not the communication of man. The Bible is not man's communication to man. Uh, the Bible is God's communication to man. 
And therefore, we understand its authority. Uh, let's go to Acts 1.16. Uh, Ray? Okay, so who, who was speaking? Was it David or the Holy Ghost? <laughs> well, the Bible says, the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake. So the Holy Ghost was speaking, and he used the mouth of David. And so you see, the words that uh, were penned by David were not his words. They were the words of God. Now, he was the penman. He was used of God. But we understand that it was the Holy Ghost who was speaking uh, uh, these uh, things of prophecy. Uh, let's look at another one, Matthew 5.18. Okay, uh, the word jot refers to the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. God said that there is not going to be uh, one, uh, this, even to the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is going to go missing from the Word of God. Uh, the word tittle refers to the smallest appendage that differentiates between two similar looking letters uh, in the alphabet. A lot of times it's just like Lowell. Either a dot or kind of little, tiny little line. And he says, so he says that one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And so we understand uh, the authority of the word of God. That's why it ought to be preeminent. That's why we ought to desire to understand and apply the Bible because it comes from God. It is not the product of man. It is the product of God. Uh, let's look one more. Uh, Proverbs 4.4. Yeah, I must have the wrong reference. Every word of God is pure, the Bible says. So, yeah, well, so it's in there. Uh, uh, maybe the wrong reference there. Uh, but the Bible declares that the words of God are pure. Uh, for example, in, uh, there's another psalm that says, As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them. Uh, and so we see... Uh, that the Word of God ought to be preeminent because of its authority. The Word of God, and I would encourage you, if you uh, hadn't um, listened when we started the church, uh, I did um, uh, four lessons on the Word of God, um, the doctrine of the Bible, okay, why we use the King James Bible, uh, why do we take that position, and we talked about the inspiration, uh, the preservation, uh, illumination, translation, we talked about all of those things, and I want to encourage you to, to uh, because that will help us to understand that the Bible is authoritative. Okay? It is the words of God communicated to the mind of man. Uh, not only is it must be preeminent because it's authority, it's authority, but secondly, because of its sufficiency. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That is profitable, he says, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Uh, and so that uh, covers every area of our lives. Doctrine speaks of our teaching, the body of truth that's contained in the Word of God. That's our doctrine. Uh, he talks about reproof. It's proper for reproof. Proper reproof speaks of the divine standard that is not being met. Reproof says to someone, what you're doing is wrong. That's reproof. Uh, then there's correction. Uh, correction speaks of the divine standard that can be met and revealed. In other words, correction says, this is what you ought to be doing. <laughs> This is the body of truth, the doctrine, uh, reproof, the, you're doing wrong, what you're doing is wrong, correction is, this is what you ought to be doing, and then there's instruction in righteousness, it speaks of the practical help that is revealed in order to live consistently by revealed truth, instruction says, this is how you do this, and so the, the, the word of God is sufficient in all of its parts. Uh, it gives us uh, God, I believe that, that applies uh, in part to the Word of God. God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He's given us everything we need, and one of those tools is the Word of God. Uh, so we see the pre it's preeminent, uh, the preeminence of biblical uh, understanding and application because it's authority and it's efficiency. But consider thirdly the prerequisite for biblical understanding and application. Is there anything required in the life of someone in order for that person to be able to observe, interpret, and apply the Bible. There are. I want us to consider, first of all, that's the first one, is salvation. 
Salvation is a prerequisite to be able to read, interpret, and apply the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, the Bible says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So it's important, you know, someone can uh, maybe have the right tools to interpret the Bible, but if he's not saved, he's not going to understand the Bible. Why? Because those things are spiritually discerned. Uh, to uh, the unregenerate heart and mind, those things are foolishness. He, he cannot know them. That's what the Bible says. He cannot. It is impossible for him to know the things of the Spirit of God. It is only given to the spiritual man to know the Word of God. Scriptural understanding can only be gained by spiritual discernment. And that can only be done when the Spirit quickens man from passing from death unto life, quickened by the Spirit of God. Ari Tori, he put it this way, he says, One must understand divine language in which it was written as well. The language of the Holy Spirit. A person who understands the language of the Holy Spirit, but who does not understand the word, the word of Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic, will get more out of the Bible than one who knows all about the Greek, the Hebrew, and conate language, but it is not born again, and consequently does not understand the language of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to talk about the tools in interpreting the Bible properly, but we understand that if someone is not saved, they cannot understand the Bible, no matter how, how many tools they use. You know, I, I spend some time every once in a while looking at the online critics of the Bible, and there's so many out there. Uh, you just type in, like, uh, contradictions in the Bible, and there's probably hundreds of websites that... Uh, go through a list of, uh, say, oh, look, there's discrepancies in the Bible. Yet to the believer, he reads those things. I'm thinking, those are not discrepancies at all. What are you talking about? The natural man does not understand the things of God. You know, they'll take things and they'll run with it and say, look, oh, look, this verse says this, and there's a contradiction. But there's so many things missing, and that is the spiritual mind. And so the prerequisite for biblical understanding and application is, first of all, salvation. And perhaps you've experienced that, that, you know, you before you were saved, you didn't understand the Bible, but then you got saved and there's spiritual understanding. The things that perhaps uh, uh, you didn't know or didn't understand, the Holy Spirit has taught those things to you. So, the first one is salvation, but the second one is surrender. In John chapter 7, verse 16, Jesus Christ is teaching and he says this, Jesus answered them and said, they were complaining about Jesus' doctrine, he says, my doctrine is not mine but he is that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. You see, the truth obeyed leads to more truth. While truth disobeyed destroys the capacity of discovering truth. I really believe that. That when we uh, uh, know some basic things of the Word of God but refuse to obey those things... Uh, God is not going to reveal to us more truth. The Bible uh, is not a book that was written to appeal to the intellect of man. That's not what the Bible is for. The Bible was written to be obeyed and applied in our lives. And uh, so uh, salvation is a prerequisite, surrender. But also thirdly, I want us to consider this word simplicity. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus says something interesting. He says, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. The disciples of Jesus Christ were, for the most part, simple men, weren't they not? Uh, I know Luke was a doctor, but most of them were fishers and uh, led simple lives. They did not have high education in the law. Uh, we must come to the Word of God as simple babes desiring to be instructed by him. Uh, you remember in Acts chapter 14, verse 3, uh, Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, and the, um, uh, the uh, Jewish authorities are perturbed by it. They're disturbed. And the Bible says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, 
and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You see, if we were to examine the message of Peter on the day of Pentecost, we would find it filled with Scripture. As a matter of fact, most of it was Scripture. It did not take a lifetime of mastering and understanding the Scriptures. We do, not, uh, we do a great disservice to the Bible when we try to look beyond its simplicity. And so, now there are some uh, passages that, that, that speaks to a deeper truth, uh, but the Bible must be understood in its simplicity. It is really not a complex book. Uh, it's pretty simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's simple. It's not complex. And so we have to make sure that when we have the Word of God, although we will talk about tools and understanding and applying the Bible, that it must be uh, um, uh, understood, studied in simplicity. 2 Peter 1, 2 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. You see, it's simple. It's not, the Bible doesn't have a level that to the common person it cannot be understood. But often that's what's been communicated. And, all, and often people, they'll rely upon a speaker, a teacher, a pastor, uh, solely to, for them to be able to understand the Bible. But it is not of any private interpretation. Uh, there is uh, no special anointing given to people to be able to understand the Bible while others can't. Okay, and so we can all have the proper tools, and so we see salvation is a prerequisite, simplicity, uh, surrender, but th fourthly, uh, I believe supplication. Psalm 119, verse 18, the psalmist wrote, he says, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. He prayed, I said, and he says, uh, Open my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see, the Word of God is a spiritual book. It's not an intellectual book. And as such, we need divine help <laughs> in order for us to understand. And the only way we can get divine help is ask of God. For James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You see, one of the best ways to understand uh, understanding the Bible is to spend time on your knees. When it comes to divine revelation, it must be, uh, we must be aware that we need divine help. Now, we'll be done here with this, number four. Um, if I do a review, we talked about the priority of biblical understanding, the preeminence of biblical understanding, the prerequisites for biblical understanding, but third, fourthly, we look at the profit of biblical understanding and application. <clears throat> Paul wrote to Timothy, and he says this in 2 Timothy 3.14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And then he says, and by the way, in that context, he began the chapter by saying that there's going to come in last days scoffers. There's going to become uh, false teachers. There's going to be a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So that's the context. But he says, Timothy, continue down the things which thou hast learned and been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And look, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction uh, in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You see, the profit of biblical understanding and application is, first of all, this. It effects stability um, to the Christian life. You know, there's... Um, Someone that relies only on an outside influence to tell them what the Bible says is constantly going to be unstable in applying the Word of God. Um, Paul wrote to Timothy, he says, Look, I don't want you to be like children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You know, the, the flesh has a tendency to follow the next thing. This is the next trend. Uh, this, is, uh, this is popular right now, so this must be it. This must be the way to understand the Bible. Uh, we must not approach the Word of God with a preconceived theological body of truth. We must come to the Word of God honestly 
and, and understand that the Word of God will provide that stability. It affects stability in our lives. It will give, keep us stable so that when we have somebody that comes in the church that doesn't preach correct doctrine, we know it because we know what the Word of God teaches. You know, beware of anybody that says, this is what the Bible says, just trust me. Beware of that. Okay. Someone ought to be able to just say, like Philip did to the eunuch, and says, look, this is what the Bible says, here's the proof. Let's just study the scripture, see this, how we interpret the Bible, and this, how we apply the Bible. There it is, you can see it for yourself. So it affects stability, but also, number two, it enables salvation. Paul told to Timothy, uh, and that from the child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You see, uh, the, uh, and you know, um, I'm thrilled that, my, uh, that I grew up in a Christian home. I was around the Word of God all the time. I knew salvation, the message of salvation. Now, I, although I knew mi many of the verses by heart, I wasn't saved until I was eight years old. That's when I uh, understood it. Uh, and uh, the Spirit of God convicted me of my sin. And uh, for the first time, I saw that He died for me. Uh, and so there's a great privilege in, in young people growing up in a Christian home to be around the Word of God. To, you know, our kids often ask us, as, uh, they typically when my kids come to the altar, uh, after each uh, message, uh, I say, well, what do you want to pray for? They say, I want to pray that I'll be a Christian one day. Well, you know, if they weren't in that setting, they, <laughs> they wouldn't have that response. And so there's a, it enables salvation. It does a work. You see, the being around the Word of God, reading the Word of God, being familiar with the Word of God enables salvation. So it affects stability and enables salvation, but thirdly, it equips the saint. Uh, we already dealt with those that the Word of God, uh, the Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God has given us everything we need. And uh, this is the way I put it. I said, uh, nobody, sh and we should not be afraid of the Bible. <laughs> we don't have to fear what the Bible teaches. We just embrace what the Bible teaches. You know, sometimes uh, we have perhaps a, a misunderstanding. We say, wow, I don't exactly uh, know what this is. We don't have to be afraid of it. If we study and understand, and interpret, and apply the Bible, uh, it will give us everything that we need. It will uh, make us complete, and it would, it's going to thoroughly furnish us unto all good works. God is going to give us everything we need uh, to live a life that pleases Him in this world. And so, uh, this, again, is an introduction, and we're going to deal with some tools uh, to help each person know how to interpret the Bible. Right? What was the three steps? We have to observe it, read it. What does the Bible say? We have to interpret it. What does it mean? And then we have to apply it, okay? Uh, how can I live it? And so, uh, again, what, uh, what uh, brings about the link, with the link between the observation and the application is the interpretation. And so, um, you really don't have to have all kinds of, I mean, I have plenty of resources to use in my study, uh, but you really don't have to have as many books as I have to study the Word of God. You know, I know some of you helped us move uh, in the, the, the house, and I know some of you are complaining about all those boxes of books. It's like, well, how many boxes of books you have? Uh, you don't have to have that many books to understand the Bible. Uh, and so there are simple rules that we can use for everybody to uh, understand the Bible. You know, often questions are asked, well, I have a trouble with this particular verse. And really... Uh, these tools will help you to be able to say, look at a verse and give you the tools to be able to understand that particular verse in its con the immediate context, the context of the book. And there. So there'll, there'll rules, and those are going to be simple things. It's not going to be a complicated thing. Okay? It's going to be a rather uh, simple thing uh, to help each one of you uh, to know uh, that, uh, you know, heaven forbid something happens to me, uh, the Lord brings somebody else out. Well, you need to be able to find out whether that person is sound in their doctrine. You can't just say, well, someone comes in and says, well, you know, well, okay, yeah, you're good to go. We, uh, you know, no. Uh, we have to be able to, uh, to know, you know, Paul commended believers for searching the scriptures. He commended them for that. Uh, and he, he says, uh, I, I praise you because you didn't receive it as it was the words of men. You received it as the word of God. And so you're to be commended for that. And uh, so uh, may uh, the Lord help us with those things. Okay.